were farmers for the longest time. It's just that in the 80s when NAFTA came in, uh, it put the small farmer, family farm out of business. Mm -hmm. uh, we just can compete financially mm -hmm. with mm -hmm. those guys. And uh, so I w entered the environmental field and been exposed to different chemicals and what big polluters we are. It's like cleaning up uh, We were doing cleanups, yeah. With the uh, military? With the military oh, and okay. traveling around, I saw there was a lot of pollution and it's all man-made, it's not natural attenuated. You know, you get, sure, you get the volcanoes that throw the ash out and all the impurities into the air, yeah. but we pollute more than they do. Yeah, that's why I see a goat, he's trying to get out. Yeah, he wants more attention. He Can used he to run around free. Get to run around? Yeah, we had him run free, except that uh, he liked to bang for the cars. Oh, My oh. brother uh, came down and he brand new car. And oh no, <laughs> dented in. <laughs> He wants to start a fight. Yeah. Well, he sees himself reflection in the car. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> We're at the top of the food chain, I want to say, but uh, in the same token, uh, we're creating our own demise. So if you value your family, I mean, yourself, well, it's one thing, but if you've got kids and the kids of other people, you got to think about the survival of the species if you care about that. Yeah. You know, that's why I got into the environmental and the organic. It's just being exposed to what was out there. You saw what's really, yes. how ugly it could get. Yes. And so you got to prepare. It was in other countries or in other uh, countries I, I went, too? Oh, I went overseas. I went to like the small islands, uh, Midway, Wake Island. Like oil John, spills or, hmm? or was it oil spills? or? Well, there Actually, the military had these fuel farms and they, through time, they start to leak. Yeah. And so they got into the water table and so stop it stop it stop it he's annoyed the little guy yeah he's punking he's, him all day yeah that's it every now and then he'll get him <laughs> but yeah it's uh that's the work i did and we did some mm -hmm. uh radioactive work uh oh wow yeah in monticello utah they uh did um uh mom and pop uh, cleanup they did uh uh, uranium tailings and put a cap over the, the mine and, and put slurry walls to stop the water from leaking into the streams Jeez. and a lot of the contaminants coming out of those mines are going into the Colorado River so into our drinking water well, and bring our source of water that's right you see it if you look it up uh, Monticello Utah uh, and contaminated water go flowing into the Colorado River it's in Lake Mead that was about 10, 15 years ago. They saw uh, signs uh, of the uh, byproduct of, I can't remember what isotope that is, but it's in our water. It's not natural. Mm -mm. But it was natural at one time, but it's no longer contained. It was contained in its natural form, but yeah, it's not, it's not a pretty picture. Mm -hmm. You have to be exposed to it to understand it. If you're not exposed to it, you're not gonna understand what I'm saying. Yeah. And uh, I could see it. it's 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 a scary thing. Mm -hmm. I mean, we don't have water. No. And you're thinking for your grandkids. Mm -hmm. No. The what are they gonna have? That's what I'm saying. Stop it. Stop it, Ed. Yeah, I love you, boy. <laughs> As you can see, there's I've got all my fertilizer down the bottom. Mm -hmm. Foxy's never met a rabbit, <laughs> especially bigger than her size. Huh, Fox? What is it? I don't know. <laughs> you can't eat them. And so here you got rabbit droppings for mm -hmm. your compost. Which then you have to age for a while. Yeah, well, actually, this stuff, all you get about, when I put my ceilings in, I dig a hole, I put between six to nine of those pallets per hole. And it, and it has enough nitrogen to support that and the fiber. Hmm. But then you need the bacteria to go with it to help break down the yeah. fiber. These are tomatoes right here. There's tomatoes. 
They look good. Yeah, Fine. they were struggling. They were yellow and, and uh, they were affected by the white fly. Then I applied the, the worm tea on it and I could see some improvement. And so I did a second application of the worm tea and it pretty much uh, took them out of the, the stress they were under for the white fly. And as you can see, the, you know, the, the plants are uh, producing, but the trial hasn't, it's not over yet. It's going slow, but I think the worm tea has done uh, uh, quite a bit of uh, uh, work for us as far as beneficial. And it's, it's slow like anything else, but you know, uh, sustainable is the way to go. Yeah. And as you can see, we're doing a trial and you can see some of the fruit here, the cucumbers. Oh, yeah. And, you know, they're small, and I, I don't know if that's from the uh, lack of pollination. And uh, we just applied the worm castings here about two weeks ago. And you can see the worm castings down at the ground right here. You can see. Oh, okay. See, see that, that discoloration there? And you can see up in a tomato plant even more so. That's what's put on the surface and that's... Oh, okay, and letting it follow, mm -hmm. follow the drip line. They get about uh, close to 18 inches long. These are uh, English cucumbers. Mm -hmm. And then they're so far organic, right? They're, everything's organic in here. Everything's from uh, rabbit droppings at the beginning mm -hmm. and oh, we're finishing rabbit. off and finishing it off with um, uh, worm castings and uh, worm tea. And here's the. Uh, and what was in your soil before? This is uh, virgin soil, actually. Oh. It's it's just a second crop, second year crop. Were they struggling before? Yes. Before the tea, what was happening? It was uh, they weren't seeing much growth, uh -huh. and uh, they were turning yellow. And uh, it seems like the, the worm tea has been uh, working pretty good. And like I said, this is a trial, so yeah. we'll know more at the end of the season. Yeah. Yeah. That opened it up quite a bit. Take this one out right there. And then as the plant grows, I'll just keep on trimming. Mm -hmm. And this should be enough to open it up. As you can see, it exposes all tomatoes and everything else. Six ounces per gallon is what we applied. Yeah. First it was half that, and then your uncle said to go more. So this is what you're seeing now, of six. Six ounces uh, per gallon. But, hey, I can't complain. It looks very good. And, and you know what? The resistance to the... Uh, disease is there yeah they're gonna get better and better uh mm -hmm. each month each season mm -hmm. even probably next year will be even better mm -hmm. these so, clusters are nice big yeah I, i'm pleased i'm pleased with what i'm what i'm seeing mm -hmm. so you're doing some trials on zucchini eggplant and tomatoes tomatoes and, and some cucumbers oh and cucumbers over there <laughs> and so now you're continuing to test using Vermistera and now you added castings kind of late to the game but we'll see how it goes yeah. by the end of winter I'll have all the section in greenhouses what are you going to grow in there? Uh, last year, last year in this greenhouse I had five variety of tomatoes and this is the tomato that came out on the top from this experiment learning the, the type of uh, varieties to grow so you got to know what exactly is going to work out here. And do the exploratory work. It doesn't happen overnight. It, it sometimes it takes a couple of years. Mm -hmm. And that means a couple of years, you're talking about four seasons. Now over here, this is last year's eggplant. This was last year's eggplant. We cut it back and it's coming back. This is going to be the second season on this. I, I harvested this yesterday and I took out about a couple pounds out of there, as you can see there. Nice. They're just beginning to uh, produce. Everything's slow. 
Well, it's winter. Mm-hmm. So, it's going to take more time. This is the eggplant. Give them a little bed. Yeah, I'm going to turn around and, and come back and, and put some cloth or paper in the bottom. You know, this is almost like a daily shore. You have to come back and sucker these things so that it'll promote good size eggplant. But pretty healthy. Yeah. As you could see, there's the worm casting. So you put a worm uh, scoop on each plant? Yeah, scoop. The recommended um, amount of castings I couldn't do that because of the it drip emitters. You know, right. it, it would have been a big, huge pile. It, yeah. it wouldn't be, have to put it more often or incorporate it into the soil. I don't so, see very many white flies in here. No, no, it's, it's, it, the cold has uh, the, has uh, knocked down the, the the white fly population. But uh, uh, the tea that I applied on these plants. Uh, has seems to uh, ward off the other insects. There's very few insects in here. Normally this time of year, still, you can see how what inspired me was that um, the food that we buy at the store is not exactly healthy. Mm -hmm. And growing organic, it, the, the plant gets the full benefit. It's, it grows a little slower, but the plant is given the time to produce all the nutrients it needs to keep better health. Yeah. You know, and so, uh, uh, I mean, you are what you eat. And so, if you want to be healthy, you got to get away from those uh, chemical-grown vegetables. Yeah. Because if you could turn around and, and compare one organic-grown vegetable versus another conventionally-grown uh, vegetable, you're going to see that they're, your organics will have higher nutrients than your in your conventional growing. And they have studies on that. There are some nutrients that they both they're both the same, uh, but others are higher in organically. So I think that the obesity is because your people have to eat more. Mm hmm They're you know, still hungry. And they're still hungry, so they eat more. And it's because the, the food they're eating doesn't have the nutritious value. And so uh, if the plant's gonna give you all the vitamins and nutrients that you need, your, that your body needs, it's not, you're not gonna want to eat more. It's harder to grow because you're dealing with a lot of new pests that we didn't have before. You know, uh, when they start creating these new hybrid plants, well, you develop new diseases where old variety uh, of crops that were natural and not engineered, uh, they don't they don't stand a chance with the new diseases. Years ago, uh, we used to plant some old variety squashes, and then the hybrids come out. Then all of a sudden, you got these new diseases coming out. The old varieties just don't make it no more. Mm. It's just like they engineered those uh, the corn, and they pollinate. You know, they all the pollen spreads spreads throughout the other corn population. And you can no longer grow that uh, that one particular uh, corn anymore. Wow! So we, you can't play God. You know, you, you're going to pay the price somewhere down the line. But uh, back in the day, uh, when our forefathers used to use just manures before they turned around and uh, start making these chemical fertilizers, they learned through observation. But now we have the technology, you know, to decipher exactly what the ratio is. But before, they didn't have that. It was all observation. Too much mm -hmm. of this, well, you're going to burn it. Just this amount, it's not going to burn it. Mm -hmm. So now we got the science behind it, what it has. So it takes some patience. It takes patience. That's the whole thing. Have you harvested anything other than the eggplant? I, I harvested the squash. Oh, you harvested yeah, some harvested squash already.
that uh, worm castings in there. Uh -huh. Look at this. Look at the oh, the new growth. New growth. Look at that. Look yeah, at this. That's the right color. That's the right color. So no. this weird splotchy stuff was maybe they got stressed out by stressed the stressed out from the white flies. White flies. Oh yeah. yeah, there's white flies in there. So look at this color. But the new leaf is gonna be strong. Mm -hmm. See, look at this. See, look at it. Yeah. Even this stuff here is, is gonna turn green. Yeah, I see it. We'll see. Yeah. We shall see. Oh, here's a nice uh, cucumber right there. Oh, big one. Mm -hmm. Make sure you take some cucumbers home, huh? <laughs> well, I'm curious how they taste. Oh, they're very good. Very good. Cut this one off right here. Good size? I'm good size, yeah. Don't worry, they get a little longer. If yeah. I, we let them go a little longer, they're going to get thinner. But they're good eating. Very good eating. Fresh? They are fresh. Fresh vegetables. Organic we grow. I hope I could develop a good tasting tomato that people want to come back and buy it then you know you succeeded. Yes. If you can't get people to come back, then you're done. You know, so, yep. And you know, I'm pleased with what I'm looking at. I just don't want them to ripen too fast right now because I want more size. You know, I want the size of those over there. I have a seven, eight ounce tomato. Mm -hmm. See like this one here? That's like a six ounce tomato. And these ones here, six, six, between six, five and six or seven maybe. So if I could achieve that growth at this stage right now and it's still green, that means she's gonna develop a little bit bigger and get the, the size I want with the color. Mm. And if I get tomatoes that are small and start developing color, then I didn't succeed. The uh, small trees are more susceptible to the spider mite. Oh. See right now what I'm doing, I'm gonna, I haven't, I, I injected this with the uh, worm teeth. That's why they're looking a little tiny green growth. These yeah. ones here, I'm gonna cut. I'm gonna cut them here. Oh yeah. Because they're too tall. So they can grow right. next and, year. Yeah, go throughout the sucker. These, this ones here, I separated from there because they're red stem. Mm, see the yeah, red stem versus yeah. the, the green. Mm -hmm. One is for, uh, for the pod and the other one's for the leaf. Mm. Pigeon is medicinal. That's why I have them. If you look it up in, 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 in the internet uh -huh. and the nutritious value of the pigeon, you'll see that this is one of the birds that you want to have. Mm. Because the way I have it here, mm. normally they have them where they can fly in and out. Uh -huh. But the reason why I don't do that, they like to spray. Oh, you don't want to get I don't want them to have any chemicals mm -hmm. when they bring them in. Mm. Keeping them here, you have, of course you have to feed them. Yeah. So it's almost not where it's not worth being sustainable. You know, to, you know. Oh, for them to forage for their own food. Yeah. If they forage for their own food, then it's okay. But now that I have to grow grains, you have to feed these guys grains. And really, it takes too much to, uh, to feed them. So, uh, if somewhere down the line, I had an area where these guys would forage for themselves, okay. Mm -hmm. But if I have to feed them, I'm gonna, can't do it. So you're not gonna, you're I'm gonna, gonna, gonna maintain end up, it? I'm gonna keep them because I could, eat on these you know mm -hmm. for myself but does it to, taste like chicken oh much, no, or better than chicken uh, better than chicken it's darker meat yeah and, and then you could make and it's like quail or something right oh uh, yeah and quail is white meat and this is like uh you know what chuckered is you know there's a dark meat of chicken that's what these guys are very good eating very very good eating. My dog is so curious. These will, if I could let them fly, they could finish for themselves and come back home. But the way I'm doing it now, because I'm, I don't want them to expose to the chemical for, uh, feeds and stuff that they eat mm -hmm. and bugs, I, I, I'll keep them like this for now. But because you're eating them, so you no, want them to be clean. That's right. Yeah. Exactly. That's why their organic deal is big with me.
If I can't raise the feet from, then they're not sustainable. Arr! Yeah. But I'm getting there. Yeah. And there's always going to be barter and you can trade with others. That's it. I'm looking at a parcel Arr! over here to grow some uh, tip grass. There's a 20 acre parcel. Then I could turn around and off season, I could raise the goats Arr! and goat milk off the tip grass. Arr! And it grows all year round. You know, especially down here, don't freeze. And it just, it'll go dormant and it'll come back. So I don't have to replant. That's sustainable. Mm -hmm. Now, that's not sustainable if you have to grow the same crop in, say, uh, Nebraska. You grow it for part of the year and then you have to replant it, it kills it. But anytime you grow a crop year round and cut it and come back, that's sustainable. You need to, you need to grow crops that will continue to produce. Mm -hmm. uh, you don't want to plant lettuce because it's a one-time cut. Then it takes a long time for it to harp until they yeah. grow it again. That's not sustainable. Yeah. That's a luxury. <laughs> hmm? You want something that's going to grow within 45 days. You got food. Yeah, it's not. Uh, it's more work than what most people want to do. Yeah, it's a lot of work. Mm -hmm. I mean, to be self-sustainable. Well, this is uh, twofold. Outside of learning as a med uh, medicinal foods and, and good food, nutritious food, also. We're preparing that, you know, the way things are now, you just don't know if we're going to have it. They're too expensive. A lot of people, they say if the economy collapses and you can't depend on your social security to be there, what are you going to do? No, stop and think about it. It's a really serious thing because the, 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 right now we're living in a false economy. People think it's so great. there. No, it's not. It's just people are throwing money out there and it's really not turning jobs out there. Mm -hmm. Nothing's, for, you know, it used to be about 40 years ago, you could get on a job and retire from that. You can't do that now. Right. You have to, this is what, this is, I can sustain myself with what I got. And, you know, if a group of people get together, you could team up with people. You see, you can't do it by yourself. Everybody has some expertise. I'll kill myself doing what I'm doing on a bigger scale. So you need people to work with the same mind. If you don't have people that work with the same mind, you're done. Mm -hmm. And that's what true sustainable living is. Yeah. And uh, I mean, anything could happen. I'm mean, looking. Well, look at what's going on you right now. What's going on worldwide? Disaster. Mm -hmm. Look at the, the storms we had. We can't even provide for them. Yeah. And we're supposed to be the top of the dog? No, I don't think so. We can't even. If we continue to have these hurricanes and disasters coming up year after year, we can't bail them out no more. You have to be an Indian. They survived. You see, they survived. Learned what they did and knew you could do it. Indians. Oh, the Indians. Huh? Yeah. Yeah. They were survivors. True. Yeah. Look at the, even in Asia, who survived all those years? The nomads. Yeah. And it wasn't until that you got the cities and stuff like that where people were working together. Mm -hmm. But before they did that, who were, before they developed the civilization and the big cities, the nomads. So, we have to return to the lifestyle. Yeah. But we could apply the science to it now. That's the whole story there, really. The environmental work that I did, been exposed to this and that, and looking at the economy, we're so far in debt. Uh, no, you gotta make a living, sure. But while you're making a living, you gotta learn something too.